What if I told you some of your favorite finance YouTubers lack accountability? Because that's exactly what's happening with this FTX situation. A lot of people are getting exposed. Let me explain. For those of you who don't know already, here's the spark notes on what went down with FTX. In 2017, Sam Bankman Fried started Alameda Research, a quantitative trading firm. A couple years later, he started FTX, which went on to become one of the biggest platforms where people can buy and sell crypto. FTX partnered up with numerous celebrities and athletes for commercials, like Steph Curry, as well as Tom Brady. They also bought the naming rights for the arena where the Miami Heat play. Needless to say, there was a lot of hype and expectations on Bankman Fried and FTX, but also a lot of suspicion and questionable behavior from Bankman Fried as well. You see, Bankman Fried is the majority owner of both Alameda Research and FTX, and people were quick to point out the possible conflict of interest where Alameda Research may get preferential treatment from FTX and vice versa. Bankman Fried assured everyone that the two companies were separate entities. That, as we have come to find out, was a lie. As FTX grew, Bankman Fried did a very clever trick. He laundered his reputation to the point where people were calling him the most generous billionaire and highlighting how he doesn't drive a Lambo, but instead he drives a Toyota Corolla. You're pretty low-key in terms of when we think about billionaires, you don't drive a Lambo? <laughs> no, I, I do not. But as Bankman Fried found out, laundering your reputation as a charitable, nerdy tech innovator can only last for so long. Then it happened. Bankman Fried's worst nightmare. A report came out alleging that Bankman Fried had secretly and inappropriately used funds from FTX customers to make risky bets for a hedge fund he also ran. That hedge fund was Alameda Research. This caused a huge number of customers to withdraw their money from the platform, causing the exchange to implode. And that brings us to the current situation. There were a lot of finance YouTubers who promoted FTX to their followers. Bia Heza, back to FTX, of course, the amazing sponsor of this video, Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, Andre Jick, to name a few. Now, I've watched each of these finance YouTubers myself, so it's really sad when there's no accountability on their part. CoffeeZilla did a great video where he explains how the finance YouTubers bought into Bankman Fried's reputation laundering strategy. So many of these experts who are giving you guys advice totally bought into this Sam character as this genius billionaire. Sam doesn't need the money to buy a Lamborghini or to buy a Rolex or to impress his friends. In fact, his car is a Toyota Corolla. It's, you trust the guy more when you see the car he drives. It's an older Toyota, Not he doesn't even have window tints on the- What does that have to do with anything? What does window tint have to do with Sam's qualifications as an investor? Exactly. They didn't care about Bankman Fried's actual qualifications. This goes back to my point. Bankman Fried looked like a charitable, nerdy tech innovator. They bought into that propaganda and ran with it without doing their own due diligence. But since FTX paid them a nice sum of money, they gladly promoted the crypto platform. For those of you wondering if there were danger signs, there were. People either ignored them or didn't bother to look for them. Along the way, few questions were asked about how the company grew so fast, and the cozy relationship built between Bankman Fried and FTX with reporters may have prevented closer scrutiny. But there were some trying to sound the alarm before everything came crashing down. Orthogonal Credit, a former lender to Alameda Research, said it severed its relationship with Alameda earlier this year. In a due diligence on Alameda, Orthogonal pointed out the company had declining asset quality, unclear capital policy, less than robust operational and business practices, and an increasingly Byzantine corporate structure. Mark Cajodes, the perennial short seller known for pointing out market frauds, put it in even simpler terms. In my view, nothing ever added up. I think SBF will make Bernie Madoff look like Jesus Christ. So you had this multi-billion dollar crypto platform run by a bunch of 20-something year olds in the Bahamas with billions of dollars and nobody looking into it. Now, I don't expect the average follower of a finance YouTuber to know all this information, but I expect a popular finance YouTuber to do their own due diligence before promoting a crypto platform to their audience. 
And the reason I believe this is because for as much as finance YouTubers like to say, this is not financial advice. They know that brands pay them a lot of money in sponsorship deals because they know their audience trusts and listens to them. For example, if I recommend Apple stock to my audience, I should probably do some research on the company beforehand. If Apple pays me to recommend their stock to my audience, I should definitely do research beforehand. This brings me to Spencer Cornelia. Spencer is friends with a lot of the finance YouTubers who found themselves in hot water. He made a video trying to defend his finance YouTuber friends from CoffeeZilla. I talked to a lot of these guys and they were fooled. They, that's the scariest part. So many of these experts who are giving you guys advice totally bought into this Sam character as this genius billionaire. I think CoffeeZilla makes an argument that many in the comment section do, which is finance YouTubers are supposed to be finance experts and they're giving financial advice and they should know better is essentially the argument. Forbes estimates Sequoia Capital invested $200 million. Paradigm, a fund focused on crypto and Web3 tech, invested an estimated $215 million. You have some of the smartest investors in the world investing $200 million into FTX and somehow finance YouTubers should have known it was a scam. So Spencer's defense of his buddies is that because the smartest people in finance got tricked by Bankman Freed, we shouldn't blame finance YouTubers too much. First of all, just because the smartest people in finance invested in FTX doesn't mean you should blindly jump in. The downfall of Elizabeth Holmes and her company Theranos and Adam Newman at WeWork should be cautionary tales that smart people do indeed do dumb things. Second of all, Spencer is deflecting for his friends. Credibility is very important in the finance and business world. These finance YouTubers were paid huge sums of money to promote FTX and now that the company has collapsed, their response is basically, oops, my bad. If these finance YouTubers were actually sorry, they would take whatever they made from the FTX sponsorship deal and give it back to whoever clicked on their affiliate link. They should also come clean about how they went about evaluating FTX or BlockFi before they decided to promote the platforms. I used to watch a lot of these big name finance YouTubers, but they seem out of touch. They're willing to throw away their reputation and credibility and screw over their followers for money. As the saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely. All the people who put their money into platforms like FTX and BlockFi because a finance YouTuber promoted it to them, are being financially wrecked. However, these multi-millionaire finance YouTubers get to escape relatively unharmed. These finance YouTubers are not only morally bankrupt, but apparently they're stupid as well. This is your sign to never trust the finance YouTuber who's being paid to promote crypto ever again. Stay safe out there. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. I don't think so.